Um, I uh, am an enormous fan of David's work, um, focusing and helping us to understand the corrupting influence of these special interests in all sorts of areas of law. Um, and I do think that there's an incredibly important risk that the same corrupting influences take over in this process as well. But I think the response to that risk is not to, to run and hide under a rock or to say, oh my gosh, we can't do it, so let's just accept a broken constitution that doesn't represent us and just live with the problems it creates. The response should be to find a way to block exactly that from happening. Now, the one thing we know about this process, because you've emphasized it so repeatedly, is we haven't actually had a lot of these types of conventions. So the mechanisms of special interest control are not well developed. But let me tell you, David, I will stand with you. We'll work together, you and me, to make sure that when these processes happen, we will not allow them to be captured in the same way. Now, I'm not so naive to say that's easy. None of this is easy. It's just important to fix these problems. And if we're going to fix these problems, it's also important to make sure your concern is addressed, that it's not corrupted in the process. Walter, Walter Olson. And yet imagine, uh, let's say the balanced budget is the topic of the convention. Imagine trying to keep everyone who has uh, a direct interest in budgetary issues, which means practically everyone, everyone who depends on a government program, everyone who pays taxes. Um, these groups will, of course, involve themselves. They are all special interests, uh, and practically every special interest in the country is going to be interested in a, a balanced budget amendment. Uh, the idea that somehow or other we can purify the process by eliminating everyone who has an interest in federal budget outcomes uh, will we'll be left with an empty room. Can I address that? Mark. 